Is the Blackmagic eGPU Pro a worthy upgrade to the original version? Better yet, is it worth 1200 bucks? Check out our full video right now. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. By now, I'm sure you all know how obsessed I am with eGPUs. I love the concept of an eGPU. I love being able to supercharge your Mac externally. And that's what this Blackmagic eGPU Pro aims to do. And this is really geared towards creative professionals, but gamers can use it too. Those who want to use VR headsets can use it too. So really, it has a whole bunch of different applications and there's a lot of use cases for this Blackmagic eGPU Pro. But obviously, given the $1,200 price point, it's aimed at the higher end. It is the Pro version of the Blackmagic eGPU, whereas the normal version sells for $700, this one comes at a $500 premium over the original. Is it worth that extra cost? First of all, why does it cost more? Well, we're gonna discuss that throughout the entirety of this video. So. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box. And guess what? Underneath that eGPU, you find another box. And in this box, you're gonna have your power cord and a 0.5 meter Thunderbolt 3 cable. So here's your power cord, here's your Thunderbolt 3 cable, and here's both. This is the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, and you can tell, if you've ever seen the original, you can tell it's exactly the same design. You have the aluminum octagon exterior, you have the exhaust vent at the top, and it's comprised of a single piece of aluminum. Excellent design. On the bottom, you have your stand and you have that little LED right smack in the middle to tell you when the device is on. So how can you tell the difference between the original and the eGPU Pro? As you may have guessed, it's all about the I.O. Yes, both Blackmagic eGPUs look almost identical, but if you look closely at the I.O. panel, you'll see the difference between the two. So on the left is the eGPU Pro, on the right is the original version. So can you spot the difference? Well, obviously, right? You're looking at it. You can see right there. DisplayPort 1.4 comes to the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, whereas a dedicated DisplayPort connection was absent on the original. Now, while it's true, you could use a USB-C to DisplayPort adapter, but most of those dongles are DisplayPort 1.2, which means you're gonna be limited when it comes to connecting to a true 5K display at 60 Hertz. So the Blackmagic logo was removed to accommodate that DisplayPort connection. Okay, so now let's talk about what is probably most important to a lot of people, noise. How loud does the eGPU Pro get in relation to the original? Here's the original. And when really pushing the GPU with that heaven benchmark, you saw it got close to 40 A-weighted decibels. So now let's do the same thing on the Pro hardware. So we're gonna push the GPU again with that heaven benchmark and you can see it gets as high as around 45 A-weighted decibels. So it is louder than the original, but just barely. And it's way quieter than any other eGPU on the market outside of the original Blackmagic eGPU. Now here's something interesting that I noticed. When you plug in the original Blackmagic eGPU and you don't connect a Thunderbolt 3 cable to it, it stays off, right? Like most external graphics boxes. But when I connect a Thunderbolt 3 cable from my MacBook Air, you'll notice the fans spin up. And you can see the fans, I put that light behind it so you can see the fans spin up like that. All right, normal operation, just what you would expect from an external graphics box. And when you unplug the Thunderbolt 3 cable, the fans stop, albeit slowly. All right, now on the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, notice what happens. When you plug it in, even without the Thunderbolt 3 cable connected, the fans power up. So that's a little different than what I'm used to, but the good news is that the fans will automatically shut down after a period of time, so they don't run indefinitely meaning it's not going to needlessly waste power. Now, like the previous version, you still have your four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. And Blackmagic is again using Intel's Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 controller. And this presents the key advantage of being able to connect directly to a Thunderbolt 3 enabled display like the LG Ultrafine 5K display. 
In my case, I'm connecting directly to LG's ultra wide 5K 2K display, which is more like 4.5K. But nonetheless, it works. It looks great. It runs at 60 Hertz. It's a super simple setup. If you have an LG ultra fine 5K display, this is one of the primary selling points of either the Blackmagic eGPU or the eGPU Pro. But as I was stating earlier, now you have built-in DisplayPort 1.4. So this means I can connect a DisplayPort connection, go directly to that 5K 2K display, and run it at full native 5120 by 2160 resolution at 60 Hertz with just that one cable. And such an addition to the eGPU Pro definitely ups its value in my eyes. Now let's talk about performance because that's the real reason you would want to upgrade to the eGPU Pro. I ran all the benchmarks using my 2018 Mac Mini, which is the six core version. Check out that full review if you haven't already. So I have a Thunderbolt 3 cable going from the Mac Mini to the eGPU Pro, and then I have a cable from the eGPU Pro going to this right here, the LG Ultrawide 5K 2K. Check out that review if you haven't seen it already. Okay, so first of all, I'm running Heaven. I have quality set to Ultra two times anti-aliasing, tessellation, moderate, and uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution. So you can see the eGPU Pro definitely beats the original Blackmagic eGPU, but even comes within striking distance of that Vega 64 custom build with my Razer Core X. Using the same settings for Unigen Valley, and you can see the Blackmagic eGPU Pro comes awfully close to the RX Vega 64. Make no mistake, the Vega 64 is faster, but not by much in these tests. Okay, so we're running Cinebench, and here are the results. You can see the eGPU Pro much faster than the original, close to the RX Vega 64. So now let's run a few real world tests. Here is Final Cut Pro 10. We're just doing a 4K export using compressor settings. The eGPU Pro exports faster than the original and not that much slower than the Vega 64. So here is Adobe Premiere Pro, the same thing. The eGPU Pro puts up some respectable numbers for this very effects heavy timeline that I'm using to test with. Now, of course, it would be ridiculous if I didn't include DaVinci Resolve because Blackmagic makes that software. It's a fantastic NLE with so many different features, but more so than any other app, you need discrete graphics to work effectively in DaVinci Resolve. Look at that difference between the integrated graphics and all the discrete GPUs. So it doesn't really matter. As long as you have some discrete graphics, you'll be good in DaVinci Resolve. Obviously the eGPU Pro does better than the original. Now here's something interesting. The eGPU Pro in Geekbench 4 actually performs better than both the original and the RX Vega 64 custom build that I have. And I've heard others report the same thing. I'm not sure if it's a bug or a driver thing. Needless to say, I'm going to be performing more testing. And here in Graphics Bench Metal, I ran several off-screen tests and it's pretty much the same story with the eGPU Pro. And in Luxmark, you see a huge difference between the Blackmagic eGPU Pro with the Vega 56 and the Blackmagic eGPU with the Radeon Pro 580. And there's a pretty big gulf between the Vega 64 as well. Now, although the Vega 56 inside the eGPU Pro performs pretty well for games, I definitely would not recommend purchasing this $1,200 graphics enclosure for gaming purposes. Even though Blackmagic has people gaming on its advertising on the box, this thing really isn't aimed at gamers at all. You can't upgrade the eGPU inside. You're stuck with an RX Vega 56 for the life of the device. Gamers enjoy upgrading their GPUs and you can't do that with this device. Stick to something you can upgrade like the Sonnet eGraphics breakaway box. That way, when AMD releases its new powerful Mac compatible GPU, or if a miracle happens and Nvidia and Apple kiss and make up, you'll be happy because you just simply pull out the old GPU, put in the new GPU, and you're good. Now, if you'd like to see more videos about the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, perhaps something like the MacBook Air and accelerating content on its internal display, let me know, leave a thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments if you'd like to see that. Now, I hope that little rant about gaming isn't discouraging because I'm not disparaging the Blackmagic eGPU Pro at all. Actually, I think it's a pretty good device, but it's clearly aimed at a specific audience. So what's the deal? Should you buy it? Should you not? Well, let's talk about it. The Blackmagic eGPU Pro is squarely aimed at creative professionals. 
it's aimed squarely at those who don't want to finagle with custom eGPU setups and are willing to pay a premium price in a non-upgradable package for the privilege. Another thing to consider is that this device is just downright beautiful. It's well designed, it looks good on a desktop, it's not an eyesore, and if you're researching such a device, you probably care about ambient noise. You probably hate those loud GPU fans. You don't have to worry about that with this. And although the Pro version is slightly louder than its predecessor when under load, it's barely audible. And here's the real kicker. If you're connecting your Mac mini or your laptop to an LG ultra-fine 5K display, this unit along with its predecessor are the only ways to drive this LG ultra-fine 5K display via that single Thunderbolt 3 connection. And that's going to give you excellent graphics performance at full native resolution at a smooth 60 Hz. So no, the Blackmagic eGPU Pro isn't for everyone, but it is a substantial upgrade over its predecessor. And if you have the unique circumstances to where such a product is very useful in your workflow, I think you'll consider this upgrade well worth it. Be sure to read our full post over at 9 to 5 mac for more details and check out our Instagram page for more coverage of the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9 to 5 mac